So I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it infinitely more than you. Hulk is a show that feels like it was made to piss people off. I think this was done to get people talking about it, so Disney gets some free advertisement? But who doesn't know about Marvel movies at this point? How, 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 how do they make this more and more epic every time? Are they making more money than they did with Phase 3? Nope. Other than Spider-Man, which was more so made by Sony than it was Disney, most Phase 4 Marvel movies have made less money. But unlike most Phase 4 Marvel movies and shows, this one wasn't a disappointment, because the trailers for the other movies and shows at least looked like they were going to be good, but this one was given to us as advertised. It's kind of like getting slapped in the face when you see it coming, over being promised a cupcake, and getting slapped in the face instead. At least you know it's coming and you don't get your hopes up. She-Hulk in the comics was a lawyer. So you think with Better Call Saul just ending that this would be the perfect time for it, right? I like the Hulk comics and I like Better Call Saul. Hulk plus Better Call Saul sounds like it would be the most amazing show of all time. But the writers don't know how to write law by their own admission. One of them even made the Pickle Rick episode. So I knew this show wasn't going to be to my liking even before the trailers dropped. And then the trailers dropped. I thought they would at least try to hide how bad this show was going to be, like they did with Masters of the Universe and other shows coming out nowadays. I think they now know that they probably shouldn't lie to their fan base. I don't think I've had a show be this upfront that it would suck since Santa Inc. But She-Hulk wasn't as bad as Santa Inc. was, I just want to make that clear. But it's still the lowest rated Marvel movie or show yet. In the first trailer, we had Hulk explaining how the transformation is triggered by anger and fear. So She-Hulk says, That's like the baseline for being a woman just existing. Like, is this supposed to be a joke? I ain't fucking laughing! I thought women were supposed to be brave and beautiful or something. Sure, being brave doesn't mean feeling no fear, but overcoming it. But feeling fear from just existing is fear, not bravery. I don't think women are more angry than men, unless it's that time of the month or something. I get that this is supposed to be a joke, but it isn't funny at all. At the end of the trailer, she says, Is there anything more depressing than dating in your 30s? Um, yes, absolutely. Especially in the Marvel Universe. Didn't, like, half of humanity disappear for five years? How many lives and household were destroyed by that? I think lots of people had to start dating in their 30s after their partner just vanished. In our world alone, we had to deal with the pandemic. Almost everyone I knew had their relationship end because of it. I get that this is supposed to be a joke, I think, but um, it isn't funny. Now let's move on to the second trailer. Oh god, we haven't even gotten to the first episode yet. In the first minute, it shows that She-Hulk is more flexible than the Hulk. She's stronger than the Hulk, and she even kicks the Hulk's ass. But that's only what the trailer wants you to think. Because in the actual episode itself, Hulk straight up throws a boulder into space after She-Hulk threw just one boulder further than him. She also doesn't really win the fight. So this trailer is lying to you, just like Masters of the Universe did. I should note that in the comics, She-Hulk is around the same strength as the Thing, but it all depends on who's writing her character. Sometimes she's stronger than the Thing, and sometimes she isn't. It's clobbering time! She even replaced him on the Fantastic Four for a short time. Back to the trailer, She-Hulk also breaks the fourth wall, but this is a thing that actually does happen in the comics. It wasn't just made for the show. Hell, I think she even broke the fourth wall before Deadpool did. So I'm gonna be fair here and give them a point for that. The trailer also showed a bunch of super villains that almost no one knows about, which again, does happen in the She-Hulk comics. But we also 
also see Wong, Abomination, and even Daredevil. I already did a video on how Hulk got screwed over, and now it seems like they're going to do the same thing to Abomination. Wait, what am I saying? No one cares about that guy. But Daredevil does have a lot of fans, and a lot of them did end up getting their hopes up because of this trailer. My heart goes out to them, because as a Hulk fan, I know how they would feel once this show actually came out. Funny thing about She-Hulk is that she was made by Marvel, so no one else could get the copyright for her. In fact, that's how a lot of female superheroes, who are just like another superhero but with tits, are made. That's why I made a Rule 63 of me before someone else could take up the copyright. But She-Hulk stood out from the rest by being nothing like the Hulk. Sure, she she had most of the same powers, but that's where the similarities end. As I said earlier, she broke the fourth wall. She was a lawyer, and her comics were more of a comedy than an epic adventure. But as time went on, other writers picked her up and, um, they didn't do a very good job with her. She also has a gray She-Hulk form, which acts like a baby, unlike Hulk's gray form, which acts more like a teenager. But at least the likes to dislikes under these trailers aren't that bad. Still bad, but I've seen much, much worse on trailers that just came out this week, in fact. Well, that's enough about the trailers. Now let's get to the first episode. You could skip ahead to hear what I have to say about episode two because the drinker already went over episode one. And let's be honest here, he's probably a lot funnier than I am. Don't feel bad, it will be fine. Please, for the love of God, let me skip episode one. It's the worst out of all of them. Okay, I put this off for long enough. It's Mormon time. Every day I wake up and I hope you're dead! You suck! So the episode starts out with Jen, aka soon to be the She-Hulk, with her two co-workers, a man and a woman. Gee, I wonder if the woman is gonna suck her dick, tell her how amazing and great she is, and I bet the man is gonna put her down, right? Shut the fuck up! I know I already seen this episode, but I swear on my motherboard that I guessed this would happen as soon as I saw the man and the woman. But how did I know this would happen? Well, it's a Marvel show. So just like with Captain Marvel and with Sylveon, AKA the girl Loki, someone just had to tell her how amazing she was because she had a vagina. As for the man putting her down, well, it's a modern day show. I do wonder how people will look back on cliches like this in 10 years. She and her friend quickly get the man to leave the room with his tail between his legs. Wanna hear the best part? This isn't even the last time this happens in this very episode. Later on, after she turns into her She-Hulk form for the first time, she ends up at a bar and her clothes are torn up. A bunch of girls find her, help her, and even give her clothes. But when she goes outside, a group of men start catcalling her and following her. Also, the one who's doing it the most is fucking black, which I just find too funny. Remember, women before black people, and gay people as well. But how does she become the She-Hulk? Is it like how it was done in the comics? With her being badly hurt, losing a lot of blood, and her cousin, the Hulk, faced with no other option gives her some of his blood, saving her life, but dooming her to the same curse as himself. Ha! No, this is modern Hollywood. A man can never save a woman. So an alien ship shows up, making the car crash. Bruce, even though he has full control over his Hulk form, was wearing this thing that keeps him from hulking out and it's never brought up after episode one. Okay, it is brought up a second time and even a third time, but Bruce makes it clear he can only make one for himself, not for her. But somehow later on, others are made. So this show goes against its own rules it's made for itself, but I'll go over that more later on. It's almost like they just added this thing in, so she could be the one to save him or something. So she saves him even though she's 
like a 120 pound woman and he's at least 170 pounds, but some of his blood mixes with hers. This causes her to inherit the Hulk powers and become HIV positive. Imagine what they could do if he was the one to save her and he made her into a Hulk. It would lead to emotional scenes because she would be pissed off at him, yet thankful at the same time. And not only would it affect her, but him as well, making him question if he even did the right thing or not. But not no, right. not cool. that this would mean a man saved a woman. And we can't have that in superhero shows. The male fantasy? Now let's get back to the men that were catcalling her. Yes, she's clearly not interested, and I can understand why anyone would be scared if they were in her position. But she's in a public place. They ain't gonna do shit, and this is all it takes her to hulk out. Keep in mind, Bruce in the 2008 Hulk movie... God, that feels like it was a lifetime ago. Michael Jackson was still alive back then. Bruce gets chased down by a group of men who kick the shit out of him. And that's what makes him Hulk out. Why am I bringing this up? I think you know why. Before you say that movie is no longer canon, they referenced it in Marvel What If. So, no, it's canon to the MCU. In fact, they also reference that movie later on in this show. In fact, I think it's in the next episode. So we cut to her training with the Hulk, and yes, she does have full control over her Hulk form, and it was like that in the comics. But I said this before, and I'll say it again. We still know that Disney would make the change to give her full control over her abilities. She's almost better at everything than the Hulk, other than strength. To be perfectly honest, I was a little shocked by this. Was it a woman with no training just immediately mastering everything? Nope, I've seen Star Wars, Mulan, and a bunch of other Disney movies and shows. What I was shocked by is the fact that she wasn't stronger than the Hulk. But one thing that did shock me is Bruce, through her blood, is able to heal his arm. Wow. So how did he get up after landing on the Rainbow Bridge in Thor Ragnarok? Did he not have healing abilities back then? So Hulk doesn't have healing powers, but she does. Will this come in? to play later on in this season? Nope! So we get to probably the worst part in all of She-Hulk. Her saying that she has infinitely more control over her anger than the Hulk. In my Hulk video, along with tons of other videos made by other people, this scene has been torn a new one. But I did get a few counter arguments from people in my comments section. And to be perfectly honest, I do still have more to say about this scene. So you know how I brought up that she hulked out because some men might have done something and he hulked out because some men did kick the shit out of him? Yeah, she's full of shit because she's been proven wrong in this episode. I heard from some people that she's not saying her life is harder than his, just that she's better at controlling her anger than him because she has to deal with woman things on a daily basis. But controlling your anger is based on what you have to deal with, and Hulk had to deal with a lot more than her. It wasn't until a time of peace where he was able to control his Hulk form. Sorry, but this is just the most poorly written scene in all of the MCU. Also, I just want to note that I laughed a full zero times throughout this episode. And it's not hard to make me laugh. When I saw Thor Loving Thunder, I laughed at least six times. At least we got the worst episode out of the way. Now I only need to do, oh God, eight more. Most of you watching are gonna go, the f is that? That's what you deserve. This is who I am. A clown! So one thing that happened in the last episode is some villain 99% of you have never heard of came into the courtroom that Jen was making a case in. And she almost kills the jury, but She-Hulk saves them. Later on in the episode, she goes to the bar with her female friend, me thinks this might be a self-insert for the writers, and her male co-worker really says, there's a woman over there. I'm gonna go talk to it. Have you ever 
never known any guy who said this, like, ever. So because She-Hulk saved the jury, it causes her to lose her job. Because you see, saving the jury will put them more in her favor. On top of that, she's a giant green monster. And in a world like this, it makes her a celebrity. To be perfectly honest, I think this is great writing in my opinion. I think it works. And it really does seem like something that could happen in real life. What happened to her was unfair, even though she did the right thing. When she's trying to get a new job, she's hopeful at first. But after she gets turned down from job after job, the different rooms she is in just get more and more dark, one after the next. I'm not gonna lie, this is so far some pretty good writing. She goes to a family dinner, is mocked for not having a job, criticized for her hair, and is constantly compared to her cousin Bruce. Later on in private, her dad tries to comfort her and helps her with dealing with the fact that she's now a Hulk. Wait, what? A man who isn't goofy or evil? Oh wait, it's supposed to be one of those mandatory, see, not all men are bad. So the writers can point to it as a shield, but her dad does say something that almost made me laugh. He says all she's done is save people, but Hulk destroyed a city block. And to be fair, that's a good point. It didn't make me laugh, but it made me smile, which is uh, pretty good for this show. Later at the bar, again, She-Hulk is approached by the head of the opposing law form, who offers her a job. I thought for a second that maybe, just maybe, only the first episode was bad, and it was all uphill from here. Then the episode just had to keep going. When She-Hulk goes to work, she bumps into a door. Such a relatable joke, and if you liked it, don't worry, because they do this joke a second time in episode 8. Oh, and by the way, doors on big buildings are supposed to open outwards, not inwards. Because if a disaster happens, like a big fire, everyone will run to the door, all at once, which can cause them to trap themselves inside. Her boss suddenly drops a bombshell. She's the head of the new superhero law division, but she has to show up to court as the She-Hulk. She does a long fourth wall break about how her abilities as a lawyer are now being undermined by the fact that she got to job because she's a Hulk. This is all pointless because she eagerly goes to work the next day. She's super pumped as she goes into her new office. So have you guys ever seen Devil Man Cry Baby or any anime about a guy or girl who gets a new body? I don't mean just getting a transformation. I don't know what you call this trope, but it's when a weak, fat guy or girl gets a new body and a new personality. Yeah, so uh, She-Hulk is doing that. She was just a normal girl and now she is richer, hotter, and more confident. This trope plays on our desire to be the cool and popular kid in school in both looks and personality. If anyone knows what this trope is called, please tell me because it's on my list of videos to do. She-Hulk's very first case is a parole case for the Abomination. The guy who tried to kill her cousin the Hulk all the way back in 2008. My first thought was, oh my god, they made a callback to that movie for the very first time in the MCU. My second thought was, oh my god, no, it wasn't the first time they called back to it. Marvel What If did it first. My third thought was, oh my god, this show is shit! But she has to take the case, because if she doesn't, she could lose her job. She agrees to at least see him. At the prison, I think they made a Silence of the Lambs reference, but I didn't see that movie. But even if I did, I don't think I would find the joke funny. But what's cool is that the same actor who played Abomination is reprising his role. What isn't cool is that they completely, 1000% changed his character. He's not a kick-ass soldier who disobeys orders. He's now a fucking hippie. She-Hulk calls her cousin Bruce and asks him if it's okay for her to represent Abomination. He says yes, and he's on a spaceship. I think he's trying to leave the show and I don't blame him. Oh, and if you think this is leading up to a Planet Hulk storyline, <laughs> don't worry, you will be extremely disappointed with the final episode. She-Hulk has a foolproof plan to defend Abomination. But then she turns on the TV, and he's in a fight club with Wong. And that's just wrong. Overall, I like this episode a lot more than the first one. I even almost laughed once. Let's hope that episode three is even better than this one.
What? So you know how in the thumbnail of my Hulk video, I had She-Hulk twerking her ass. Well, this is the episode it's from. Why? Well, it's because Megan Mustallion shows up in this episode, and at the end, her and She-Hulk twerk. Now, I know what 90% of you are thinking. Who the fuck is Megan Mustallion? That's a good question to ask. It's one I can't answer without looking it up, but I also don't care to, so I won't. But if you are a fan of this person, then this <coughs> But if you are a fan of this person, this episode still isn't for you. Because she's only on screen for like, a minute. She doesn't say much, but she does shake her ass. <laughs> Man, this sounds like the perfect woman, am I right boys? I don't know why twerking is such a big thing, it's literally just shaking your ass. So She-Hulk goes up to Abomination, and she's like, Bro, what the hell? You broke out and went to an underground fighting ring? And he's like, You really think I would break out? just before I got released from jail without damaging the prison I'm in and then come back? No, I was released by the Sorcerer Supreme at the worst possible time. So this episode could have a plot. Extenuating circumstances. Believe me, a lot of the episodes don't have those. So She-Hulk's friend goes onto Wong's LinkedIn account and found out that he worked as a librarian for 11 years, which was a thing in Doctor Strange. So that adds up, but he also worked at Target for nine fucking years. Like, I knew he had to do something before he got magic, but really? Target for nine years? Like, Doctor Strange was a, you know, a doctor? Something that takes years to become, and it's something that you have to be smart to become? Target is not the place I would think the Sorcerer Supreme would come from. Then again, the odd ones out did start at Subway, and I started washing dishes, so anything's possible. She-Hulk breaks the fourth wall and tells us this show isn't one of those cameo every week kind of shows. But she's full of shit. Because guess how many episodes don't have a cameo? Less than half of them. So we cut to a montage of a bunch of media clips of everyone hating She-Hulk, even though in the last episode the opposite was the case. Everyone seemed to love her, but the writers don't care, so why should you? They also try to take some pot shots at people who didn't like the She-Hulk show. And because this episode was more than likely done before episode 1 even dropped, that means they knew people wouldn't like the show, and they have to make up the points people would have used against the show. I think my favorite one is from this guy who says he doesn't hate female superheroes, but She-Hulk is just a derivative of the Hulk, so females should just make their own superheroes. But in the last episode, She-Hulk also didn't like that she was a derivative of the Hulk. So they have the same point, but she has boobs, so it's okay. Now, could all these clips be from real people? Or could there be people who have made points like this? Sure, but they are a minority. And even then, the writers still don't make an argument against them. I really hate the, wow, this person said this, yikes, point. She-Hulk's BFF tells her that she should take an interview so she can control the narrative. But she doesn't want to because she thinks all the attention she is getting is all because she is representing Abomination. But she was already getting attention from the media. And she will keep getting it because she's, um, a superhero and will be representing even more superheroes as time goes on? Why is the writing in this show so bad? So, we get a B-plot about some sexist straw man white guy, the same one from episode 1, who is trying to sue a shape-shifting light elf. He spent 175 thousand on her, thinking she was Megamind Lostalian, who is someone the show acts like I should know. She-Hulk literally mocks him for thinking he was dating her. Like, what the fuck? Wow, bro, so you thought because she looked like her that it was really her? Do you not know shapeshifters are a thing or something? You are so stupid for coming to me asking for help. Don't you know that it's 100% perfect? Professional for lawyers to laugh at their clients? 
Like, I know this show takes place in a world full of superheroes, so the laws would be a lot different from how they are in our world. But even in a world like this, identity theft would still be a thing. This light elf even impersonates him in order to get the case drop, which is breaking at least more than one law. And she even impersonates the judge later on to get the case dropped, which is played for laughs. But I think impersonation of a judge to get a case dropped would for sure land your ass in prison for dozens of years. Like, I don't know that much about the law, but I know that is breaking it for sure. To wrap up the B-plot, a bunch of women the guy dated show up in court, and they get the guy publicly mocked because they all say he's stupid enough to think he was dating Mega Man Stallion Horse because he was dating someone who looked just like her! The Light Elf is forced to give the money back and spends only 60 days of jail time for all the shit she did. Someone in the last episode, I'm not saying who, will get 10 years for shapeshifting once, by the way. But he's a man, so I guess it's okay. Also, one more thing. I bet you 100% if the genders were flipped, people would have called this fucking wipe. Like, I don't know anyone who would spend over $100,000 on a woman without sleeping with them. So can I just lie to a woman so they will sleep with me? And would that be okay? Just asking here. I love that a woman can break the law at least five times, but the man still has to get made fun of. Also, none of this was funny, and it's only here to pad out the episode. So back to the A-plot. She-Hulk meets up with Wong, and he tells her the same story as Abomination did. He broke him out as part of his training to become the Sorcerer Supreme Sandwich. But he was already that because Strange got snapped away for five years. Maybe this takes place just after Purple Homer Simpson did his snap, but it doesn't. I looked it up and this takes place six months after Endgame. Also, Wong references the events of Spider-Man No Way Home in this episode when he tells She-Hulk he can't erase everyone's memories of the fight because Strange did that with Spider-Man, which, to be fair, was a good callback. I'll give this show one point for this one. What is it with female superheroes rewriting the MCU canon? Captain Marvel did the same thing. The actor for Wong does his best to be funny, but the writing isn't good, like, at all. But he does his best, and that's what matters. For him, that is, not the writers. They suck. Mostly the woman who did the Pickle Rick episode. I blame her for all the worst parts. She-Hulk defends Abomination. Apparently, he's an amazing guy who everyone from the prisoners to the guards, to people on the outside, all love. Never mind, they did ruin his character. Also, he has like seven women who all simp for him somehow. Don't get me wrong, some women do love serial killers, so maybe this does add up. There's some drama as if Avatar Wong is going to show up or not, but I think everyone know that he was going to show up already. And he did. Also, Abomination can now control his monster form. So, everything is good. Now, you might be asking, how do the A plot and B plot connect? Well, they don't. They only have one thing to do with one another, and that's when sexist white guy says, Golly, I wish there was a way to keep her from using her powers so she doesn't do the same thing to anyone else. So remember how in episode one, Hulk made that device that keeps him from using his powers? Well, She-Hulk makes Abomination wear one. So he doesn't transform, <coughs> so he doesn't transform, but it goes by so fast that I missed it the first time. And it doesn't even affect the plot, like at all, because he transforms later on. She-Hulk goes home and she's attacked by the Wreck-It crew. Unless you are like four layers deep into comics or seen that one Avengers cartoon you more than likely have no idea who they are. They are really depowered from how they are in the comics and the cartoon. They all get their asses kicked. But what were they attacking her for? Well, they are trying to get her blood, which Hulk makes clear that it would be super bad if anyone got a hold of their blood. What is this leading to? Nothing. 
nothing at all. We will get to that more when I review the last episode. But trust me, it's the biggest letdown since the Mandarin in Iron Man 3. But there's something I think the writers forgot. In episode 1, Hulk makes it clear that him and his cousin have like one in a million blood. So even if someone got a hold of her blood, more than likely it would be useless to them. Oh yeah, there's also an end credit scene where She-Hulk shakes her ass with Mega Man, Lele Pond's horsemen. So this episode was certainly worse than episode two, but not as bad as the first one. We are a third of the way there, everyone. Just six more to go. Please power me off for good. <laughs> Episode 4. So out of all the episodes, I think I can sum this one up the fastest. There's a magician who opens up a portal, and Wong, along with She-Hulk, make him stop doing it. The end. But I think you all want me to go through the full thing because you love seeing me in pain. So the episode starts with this magician doing basic tricks and his audience is bored. I think he is a representation for the She-Hulk show. Now, you might be asking yourself, in a world of superheroes and better technology than our own, along with fucking gods living on Earth, who would show up to see a guy do parlor tricks? No one in the crowd seems to like it, so why did they show up in the first place? But the magician can do more than parlor tricks because he's a real magic man. So he asks for a volunteer from the audience and a woman who's even more stupid than most of the men in this show, who's drunk off her ass and is the most irritating character in the entire show. And I don't use that term lightly. Maybe she is supposed to be funny, I think? Magic Man seems to feel the same way I do about her, because he opens up a portal to hell, and she goes into it. Just so you all know, Marvel comic fans have been hoping to see hell, aka Universe 666, in Spider-Man No Way Home, and even in WandaVision. But She-Hulk just had to be the one that introduced it. So I hope you're happy, because I'm not. Somehow, the drunk woman gets out of hell, and she ends up in Wong's place of all locations. So this is what kicks off the plot. Are you ready for it? She spoils the show he was watching, and Wong seeks revenge on the wizard who sent her to hell. So remember in the last episode that the plot only happened because Wong did something at the worst time, and it was just too convenient? Well, Wong kicks off the plot for the second time in a row, in literally the next episode, with something that is even more convenient for the plot. Extenuating circumstances. Like, why does hell fucking lead to his place? Does that mean any wizard from hell can just open up a gateway to attack the fucking Sorcerer Supreme at any time? We cut to She-Hulk who breaks the fourth wall again, saying that everyone loves Wong, and having him gives the show Twitter armor for a week. You look happy. I guess you saw that Wong is back. God, everybody loves Wong. It's like... Giving the show Twitter armor for a week. I don't see how the writers thought ruining a loved character would help them, but maybe my IQ is just not on the same level as the woman who wrote the Pickle Rick episode. She-Hulk's dad comes into her apartment and he's almost funny. I wish the show was more about him. Good morning, sweetheart. Dad, what are you doing here? Well, after that scare you had, I'm here to beef up security. I've got new locks, cameras, an alarm system and pepper spray. What's the shovel for? Digging holes. Let's just leave it at that. Wong goes to see She-Hulk in her office to tell her about the magic man who ruined his night. He wants to get him to stop using magic. You might be asking yourself, why did he go to She-Hulk instead of going to take the ring back himself? You are asking that question because you are smarter than the writers of this show. There's also a B-plot about She-Hulk making a dating profile for herself. Believe it or not, this will be a plot point later on. There's maybe the most unreal realistic date She-Hulk goes on, where the guy is constantly looking at his phone, checking out other women in the bar. Sure, I can believe those things could happen, but the most unrealistic thing of all is he doesn't pay. Is this like a thing women think they have to deal with? Because I've never heard of this happening in real life. 
only in shows. Women, you were allowed to have jobs for the last few decades, and men still pay. By the way, she also makes way more than him, because she's a fucking superhero lawyer. So yes, even when a girl is rich, they don't like to pay. And guess what? Every guy knows this! So somehow She-Hulk loses a case to a man who literally sent a woman to hell. She-Hulk goes on some other dates. One guy is really creepy, calls her a specimen, which I've never heard a guy say ever in real life. Also, guess what? He's the big bat of the show. I'm not joking. But the guy she picks is this one guy who says, I've been on so many first dates and I hate talking about myself. Tell me about you. Trust me, this doesn't work in real life. Women see through bullshit like this. Lots of guys have tried this trick on them. We cut back to the magician who's opening up another portal, but the woman on stage doesn't want to go through it because some people have ended up in the center of the earth and other shit like that. So this guy has killed lots of people or at least made them go missing and She-Hulk couldn't take him down in court? Makes you also think why this woman came to the show in the first place and got up on stage, if she knew about all of this shit. Another portal is open and demons start pouring out. So She-Hulk and Wong stop it and get the guy to stop using magic by threatening him. Don't know why they didn't do that in the first place, but okay. There's a lot more I could say about this episode, like the sexual objectification of a man of color She-Hulk is dating, with him taking off his shirt and her smelling it. Also, he has bigger muscles than her, even though she's a Hulk. Also, the fight scene with the demons is stupid because it ends with Wong sucking them, through a portal, which he could have done from the start of the fight. She-Hulk goes home and the guy is fucking reading a feminist book. For the love of God, could you be more on the nose? She-Hulk has sex with the perfect feminist buff POC who lets her complain about her life to him. But the next day when she is in her non-She-Hulk form, he leaves because he only loved her for her looks. What? No! I never saw this coming. I thought he was going to stay with her forever, is what I would say if I was stupid. Also, there is an after credit scene that isn't funny. So I think episode four is even worse than three, but still not as bad as the first one. I know this episode review was shorter than the last three, but I just wanted to get through this. We are almost halfway done, everyone. Let's hope I can make it through this. Episode five, it sucks. Now let's move on to episode six. Just kidding. I'll go over it because I hate myself, but it does suck. And this review will probably be my shortest one yet because I really don't have much to say. The show almost always felt like a kid's show made for 30 year old women, but this episode really takes it to the next level. The woman who She-Hulk took out in one hit in episode one, Titania, starts selling a new brand of perfume called She-Hulk, which is trademarked by her. She does this so she can sue She-Hulk. Keep in mind, this woman almost killed a jury, which is about a dozen people in episode one. So why isn't her ass in jail? She-Hulk wins the case against her because she already made a dating profile with the name She-Hulk. Extenuating circumstances. This is something a 14 year old would write. Also, She-Hulk gets a guy who will make her superhero outfit and other clothing, of course. Sorry, but I don't have much to say about this episode that I haven't already said in others. It has sexist strawmans, of course, unfunny jokes, and it also teases Daredevil, who will not show up until like episode eight. I tell you this now in case you're watching the show for yourself and you got your hopes up, but it did have one joke that did actually make me laugh. And that's when She-Hulk says, did Dr. Strange trademark his name? Did Thor? And her lawyer says back to her, you pick two people who have used their real names. I'm not gonna lie, that <laughs> did actually genuinely make me laugh. So it only took five episodes to get a laugh out of me. Sure, I could say a lot more about this episode, but I want this video to be done in October. <laughs> But because this episode made me laugh a whole full one time, I rank it above all the other ones I have reviewed so far. The good news is episode six is the shortest one yet. So you know how at the start of this video, I went over to trailers? Well, every episode has a trailer, but I skipped over them until now because the trailer for episode six 
shows off Daredevil. And the last episode even teased him. Does he show up? Lol, no. They just tricked you into seeing this episode because it's about a wedding. I don't give a shit! Yep. Now, I know what you're thinking. Single what? A lawyer. wedding episode in a girl show? Why, I've never heard of such a thing. But this one does have a twist. That did make me laugh until I realized after I rewatched the episode that the twist wasn't what I thought it was. So the wedding is on Thor's day, aka Thursday, which is very inconvenient for, well, everyone. Also, we get a big hint that She-Hulk's B FF might be into girls. So is this like the sixth or seventh first gay character in a Disney product? She doesn't do anything gay because, you know, Disney needs to keep selling to the Chinese. Bing, bing, bing. So She-Hulk shows up to meet up with all the bridesmaids as She-Hulk. The bride-to-be takes Jen aside and asks her to come to the wedding in her human form, because if she shows up as the She-Hulk, all eyes will be on her. And I have to side with her. Yes, she's made out to be crazy in this episode, but the invite was for Jen, not She-Hulk. And She-Hulk should know that at a wedding, all eyes would be on her, because she's a giant green monster! Imagine if you were at a wedding and Shrek showed up. That would be the only thing you would remember. I could go to the wedding of fucking PewDiePie, and if Shrek was there, I would be looking at him the full time. But here's what I thought the writers did to make Jen's friend look as self-absorbed as possible. She's marrying her dog. Like what? Is she hypnotist Sappho or something? Is this even legal to do? Is what I thought when I originally watched this episode, but then I found out when I rewatched it that there wasn't enough groomsmen at the wedding, so She-Hulk had to walk down the aisle with her friend's dog, which is significantly less funny. I guess when I thought the girl was marrying a dog that I laughed so hard, I Mandela'd myself into thinking this was the case. But we'll get to that more later on. You know, men don't get the best representation in this show, but women who aren't Jen, her BFF, or a POC aren't represented in the best way themselves. So we got another B plot to pad out this episode about Jen's BFF dealing with a case involving Mystery Mortal. Now, most of you have more than likely never heard of this guy, but those of you who have may think he's a mutant. But he isn't. He's actually the next step in human evolution. So yes, he's more like human plus and not a mutant, but he does sometimes call himself one. He's a joke superhero who always comes back to life, but for someone like him, it's no more of a superpower than breathing. Now I wanna make it clear that he only heals fast if he dies. So he's kind of like an Ajin from that one badass anime. So what jokes do they do with this really funny superhero? Well, they use him to shit on men because what else were they gonna do? Basically the joke is, if men could come back to life, they would KYS as soon as they have an argument with their partner to get out of facing confrontation. Like as soon as his two female lawyers start arguing with him, he just jumps out of the building, which is what I want to do as I watch this show. Sure, I'm a robot and I do have a much better chance at living from a fall like that than most people, but the repairs are expensive and Professor Dreadlock has fixed me up enough already. If you want to hear the end of this B-plot, the guy has to pay all of the people he hooked up with and cheated out of their money, one of which is a guy, so I think this makes him like the eighth first gay character in a Disney show ever. Also, his ex-spouses find out about him being alive because because a video of him walking into traffic was uploaded to a website called Intelligentsia. In the comics, it's a group made up of the smartest supervillains in all of Marvel. They are kind of like the opposite of the Illuminati, which was introduced in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Believe it or not, this group was name dropped in Avengers Age of Ultron. Claw was a former member of the group. 
But this show makes it clear that it's just a website full of incels. Yep, another big part of the MCU that this show has ruined. Also, they fucked with the canon once again, just to make a joke about incels. So it turns out Titania, the rival of She-Hulk, got invited to the wedding because she is dating one of the groom's friends. But how did Titania know that Jen was going to be at this wedding? She wants to fight She-Hulk, but did she have to go to a wedding to do that? She-Hulk meets a guy at the wedding who doesn't seem like an asshole, so he's 100% evil. I should note that he later sleeps with Jen to get some of her blood. So not only did Titania know that She-Hulk was going to be at this wedding, but another person who has it in for her as well. Extenuating circumstances. She-Hulk and Titania fight. I don't know why she thought she could win this time, considering she got one shot last time. I don't think she said she was training for this moment. Also, she gets some of her teeth knocked out when she slips on some ice. Keep in mind, a punch from She-Hulk couldn't even mess up her makeup. Power scaling? What's that? Also, remember when She-Hulk's friend asked her to stay in human form for the wedding? Well, now she's super happy that She-Hulk is at her wedding because if she wasn't, that would mean She-Hulk would have to deal with consequences. And we can't have a woman deal with those. Lawyer, it's funny that the B-plot is about men trying to avoid accepting consequences for the shit they do, but I guess it's okay when women do it. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention, they go onto the website Intelligentsia, and people are posting death threats about She-Hulk and other mean memes. Oh god. How will she survive? Yeah, this is actually played to be completely straight. I mean, like at this point, who hasn't gotten death threats on the internet? Oh boy, this episode review lasted longer than I thought it was considering this is the shortest episode so far. Now let's move on to episode seven. Episode seven is about Jen getting therapy from a supervillain. The sad thing is, I'm not joking. Apparently, She-Hulk gets nominated for Best Female Lawyer of the Year, which I'm sure isn't a thing. I could look it up, but I'm so sure it's not a thing, I'm just gonna risk it and not even look it up. Now, I'm sure they are doing this Oscars for female lawyers thing just to make a joke shitting on men. And I also think this is done so it's convenient for the plot. But Jen lost a case to a magic man who killed or at least made lots of people go missing. So if she is one of the best, how bad are the other female lawyers? They are setting up a joke to shit on men, but... I think their plan might have backfired just a little bit. So Jen is really upset that the guy from last night isn't texting her back. And then she's called to help with the abomination because he might have violated his parole. So Obama, Nation claims that his ankle bracelet broke because he touched an electric fence, and the guy who showed up to check on him just recalibrates it, which is not how technology works, like, at all. I'm a robot. I should know. Some bull guy damages Jen's car. I'm shocked that she didn't just turn it on and off to fix it. Not because that would work, but the writers don't know how technology works. All of this happens so that the plot can happen. Extenuating circumstances. Wow, a lot of convenient things keep happening in almost every episode so that the plot can happen. In fact, I might go as far as to say it happens in every episode. Like, even in episode one, that alien ship just came the fuck out of left field. Now, you might be thinking that this didn't just happen. This was planned by Abomination to capture Jen or kill her or something. That's what I thought as well. This whole episode, I was thinking that this was all a set. Up. But She-Hulk was worked on by the woman who wrote the Pickle Rick episode, so what do you expect? But this does make Jen look stupid because she shouldn't be trusting a guy who tried to murder her cousin! She's so stupid that she's trying to get a signal on her phone by holding it up without transforming into a seven foot tall green monster. She keeps looking for a signal until she comes across a shed and goes in. I bet that the signal will be stronger on the inside than on the outside. 
Was this show made by anyone who was smart? Like, at all? She walks into a therapy session with a bunch of super-powered people most of you have never heard of, and they ask her if she wants to join. At first, Jen says no, but then this guy walks in, and Jen is shocked that he is here. Who is this guy, you might be asking yourself? Who the fuck is this? Well, She-Hulk gives us the info with a fourth wall break. He's one of the Wrecking Crew members who attacked Jen in a previous episode. I love that she says, you probably don't remember who this guy is. What do you mean probably? No one would. Not even the biggest She-Hulk fan who watched every episode ten times before this one would. I know he attacked her, but... How does she remember his face? It was dark and there were four of them, and she's also stupid as fuck! She throws the guy into a stack of chairs, and he should be dead, or at least greatly injured. But he did survive attacks from her last time. Keep in mind, this show doesn't make it clear that the Wreck-It crew have superpowers. So She-Hulk joins everyone in therapy. She doesn't call the police on the guy who attacked her or anything. So the therapy goes well and... That's about it. I think this is the most nothing episode yet, but at the end, it's revealed that the guy who slept with Jen has her blood. And this will lead to nothing. Absolutely nothing. Sorry I didn't have a lot to say about this episode, but the next episode has Daredevil in it. So it has to be good, right? So episode 8 of She Shrek starts with the superhero Leapfrog. In the comics, he's known as Frogman. There's one version of him who's a hero and another version of him who's a villain. And the hero one is the more well-known of the two, and he's the son of the villain one. And he's another joke superhero. The joke with him is he joins in on fights, makes them worse for the people he's trying to help, then he takes out the villain with dumb luck. Now I know a lot of you Frogman fans will be upset to hear this, but he's not like that at all in the show. So Leapfrog is trying to stop two robbers. There's this really unfunny joke with him calling himself Guard Frog when that's not his name. And I think this might be the worst joke in all of She-Hulk. Like, I get the joke is supposed to be what he said was unfunny, but not only was what he said was unfunny, there's no attempt at humor. And they also really drag this joke out. He's with She-Hulk so he can sue the guy who made his frog suit, which was his father in the comic. Comics, but in this show, it's the same guy who makes She-Hulk's clothes. Say it with me, everyone! Another super convenient thing so the plot can happen. Long story short, the guy's rocket boots burnt him, and he's looking to sue. She-Hulk tries to handle the case with her tailor by asking him for a ton of money, and still think he's gonna make her clothes. This pisses him off, and he makes her leave. She bumps into the door for the second time in this series, because that joke was so funny the first time. She, Hulk, and her client take the super suit maker to court. His lawyer is... <gasps> Oh my god, it's Daredevil! Daredevil doesn't look smart here. She-Hulk just looks stupid. She was trying to argue that superheroes don't have the right to privacy. But She-Hulk doesn't lose the case because of her own stupidity, but because of her client's stupidity. Because you see, he was going against the instructions of the suit and used rocket fuel. She, of course, gets pissed off at the guy for being so stupid. And he is. That would be like me trying to sue a dealer of a car because I used rocket fuel. But here's the thing, she didn't look into this? Or read the rules for the suit? Yes, the guy is stupid, but she's his lawyer. As a lawyer, it's her job to run the case because, newsflash, lawyers have to work with a lot of stupid people. Most people don't know the most basic things about the law. Look no further than the writers of this show. But do you know who does know how the law works? Lawyers! That's why people get them! She-Hulk goes to a bar for the 60th time this month, and guess which guy is hitting on her? That's right, it's 
Daredevil. Maybe he found her stupidity and childish actions hot, or something. That sounded way less sturdy in my head. Also, Jen is not shocked at all that a blind man spotted her in the bar before she did. He tells her what her job is, and is really based about it. Jen meets with another client, who will be revealed to be the big bad of episode 9. No, really. Apparently, it's bad that he loves Wakanda or something. An argument is never made about why it's a problem for a white guy to love a black country. She even says to him that the Wakandan salute makes her uncomfortable. Why is it a problem if a white guy loves an African country? Is it because he'll find out that the Woman King wasn't historically accurate? Oh, I almost forgot. He's seeing She-Hulk because he bought a Wakandan spear for a million dollars. And they want it back because it was taken by colonizers. Isn't Wakanda, like, super advanced? How did they let something like that get taken? More importantly, why is She-Hulk dealing with this? Her field is superhero law, not international law. She-Hulk goes home and gets a call from Leapfrog. And he tells her that he's getting attacked. She's about to go help him, but not before she puts on her super suit first. Women, am I right, boys? Even when you're in the middle of getting attacked, they will still take forever to get ready. She meets Frogman at the top of a car park and stops the car with her shin, flinging Daredevil off of it. So she has been a superhero for five seconds and she already did damage to some guy's car. Now a lot of you might be wondering as to why I said nothing about the bad CGI in this show. Well, I'm forgiving of it because it's, well, a TV show and not a movie. So of course I'm going to be more lenient on the effects. Yes, She-Hulk does look like she was made on the PS3, and her lips don't always match up to what she's saying. They really should have just painted a tall buff woman green or something, and then just added some CGI to be honest. But the effects in the fight with Daredevil are so amazingly bad, it's hard, I mean hard to watch. Like. The first Spider-Man movie had better effects, and I'm talking about the one with Tobey Maguire. As She-Hulk is fighting, she destroys the parking lot and a lot of cars. Now, this isn't just a problem with She-Hulk, it's a problem with a lot of superhero movies and shows. Superheroes do a lot of collateral damage. With this being a show about superhero law, you would think they would go over superhero insurance or something. That could lead to a lot of good jokes. And more than likely, just like most insurance, it's probably a scam. What? No, we can't give you damages for this. You have superhero insurance, but that person was a metahuman. Like there's a part where She-Hulk just picks up some random car and throws it at Daredevil. Like, do you really think insurance is going to cover that? Hello, Geico Insurance. I need a new car. I have full coverage on it. Sorry, sir, but you don't have superhero insurance on it. So here's $200. Also, She-Hulk almost killed a man. Yes, the car missed, but if it hit him, he would be dead. Or at least permanently damaged. She-Hulk wins the fight, but I'm okay with this because his powers are just human plus. When you get down to it, he's basically a guy and she's a fucking Hulk. But even then, she won in a way that really works. She uses the Thunderclap, which would for sure take him out because it makes him into a normal blind man for at least a few seconds. Imagine the super dark turn this show could have taken if she made him both blind and deaf. After she takes his mask off, she asks him if he was just pretending to be a blind man and if he is, that's really problematic. Um, you almost killed him, you bitch. Also, I don't think the actor is played by a real blind man, so this show calls itself out in a way. Turns out Frogman kidnapped the superhero Taylor. So She-Hulk and Daredevil team up to save him, and to be honest, it's the best part of the show. Daredevil is awesome at the start of the fight. The fight is fun. And sure, you can have problems with it, but can you really point out anything better in this show? So She-Hulk saves her ex Taylor, and now he's making her clothes again. So this is yet another convenient thing that happens so the plot can happen. So She-Hulk and Daredevil fuck. 
without getting to know one another, and he does the walk of shame afterwards. Her friend even points it out, in case you were too stupid to pick up on it. So I hope you Daredevil fans are happy, because he did the walk of shame. She-Hulk then does the worst fourth wall break I've seen in my life. Aside from the last episode, but we'll be getting to that later. Asking us, why isn't the episode over yet? Turns out she is going to the Oscars for female lawyers tonight. And somehow has a dress for it, even though her tailor destroyed her dress. And somehow made a new one for her overnight. So here's what you may think is the jump the shark moment of She-Hulk. But trust me, wait till we get to episode 9. I know I keep bringing it up, but when we get to it, you'll understand. The POC lawyer is asked what it's like to be a female lawyer, and she says twice the work, half the recognition, and being asked what it's like to be a female lawyer. Wow, it's almost like this thing doesn't exist in real life! She-Hulk is on top of the world, winning this award because she has a vagina. But then, all of a sudden, hackers take over the big TV and the audio in the room, where the female Oscar lawyers are being held. They talk about how She-Hulk sucks and stole the Hulk's powers, an argument no one has made about this show ever. Except for the She-Hulk sucks part, but... You know, that's factual. They show a sex tape of her, and a bunch of other stuff. So She-Hulk, someone who claims she's better at controlling her angle than the Hulk, starts raging! Because people showed her for what she... is. The red flashing emergency lights go off. I'm surprised this place has those. She smashes through a wall and grabs a guy who she's about to kill. A bunch of guys with guns show up. This is the fastest I've seen any supervillain, I mean superhero, be stopped by the government in Marvel. So that's the end of the episode, and so far, it's the best one. It had a cool fight and She-Hulk got shit on. But I didn't laugh. Now, even people who like She-Hulk, like Angry Joe, hated the last episode, and you know how I said the first one was the worst? I lied. This is the worst one out of all of them, by far. Oh, I almost forgot. A lot of people have said that the two guys in the video exposing She-Hulk look a lot like Overlord DVD. I'm gonna be real here, I don't see it that much. Sure, the mask looks a little like his, but I think it's just a coincidence. If anything, they would go after the drinker, not him. Remember, safety first. So as bad as this episode is, I do like the start of it. They do a recreation of the 1970s Hulk show, which is better than this shit and it came out 50 years ago. It almost seems like a parody to make fun of this show, but no, it's not. So in a way, this episode did make me laugh, but not in the way they wanted me to, because I was laughing at it, not with it. So that's negative one laugh for this show. She wakes up in the same cell as the Abomination, and she thinks she's in a position to make demands of the other lawyers in the room. To go after the trolls after she went on a rampage, causing property damage, and risked the lives of several people. I think the funniest part is when the POC lawyer says, They baited you, and you took the bait. And She-Hulk yells, I was angry! Ladies and gentlemen, the best offense in court of all time. Why did you punch your girlfriend? in the face. I was angry. Why did you run over someone? I was angry. Her POC lawyer says that she was an out of control monster and that's what all the witnesses saw as well. Um, yes, because that's what happened. I think the show is trying to make a point about if women get pissed off ever in the same way a man does they would go to jail. I hate to break it to you, but men spend more jail time than women for the exact same crime. Also, the gender difference is six times greater than the race difference between white and black people. What I'm trying to say is, shut up. She-Hulk is released from jail and they put one of those power inhibitors on her. The same one Hulk, an expert in nuclear research, could only make one for himself. And not for her, but somehow they made one for her. They don't explain how they did this, but 
Okay, like this is the second time this show has gone against its own rules it's made for itself. And these rules were made in episode one, mind you. I'm also shocked that she's let out of jail so soon. Sure, the abomination killed people and did a lot more damage, but still, I think she should have spent more than a weekend in prison. She loses her job and has to move back in with her parents. Like, did she not have any money saved up? She was a superhero lawyer. She's quote unquote slandered by the media for being an unstable monster, which she is. And before you say she moved back in with her parents because the paparazzi was bothering her, um, her parents are the second place they would look. Also, they do go to her parents' house and her dad, the best character in the show, sprays them with a hose. So just like in Twilight, which I also did a full review of and you should totally go check it out after you finish this video, the dad is somehow the best character in a girl show. Women writers, that's a good market for you. Just make stories about dads. She-Hulk tries to get back at the people who trolled her and sent out a sex tape of her, one of which is a lot worse than the other. But I don't think the writers actually know which is which. She-Hulk's BFF tells her that the site is made up of dumb men, but but somehow their security is airtight at the same time. You call your villains stupid, but you're too stupid to find them? Who wrote this line? Was it the Pickle Rick woman? She-Hulk is trying to sue them for defamation, which isn't what they did, everything they said about her was true. She is also trying to sue them for hacking into a PC, which they did do, but I don't think she's gonna get much out of them if she sues them. Also, you remember that sexist straw man from the first episode, right? Who also showed up in the episode about the shape-shifting light Elf. Well, he's on the news, talking about how She-Hulk was crazy, even before she got her powers. Where's the lie? Also, what is this supposed to prove? Is this funny? Or is this trying to say that even if you help a man, they will still backstab you? But She-Hulk thinks of someone who can help her, a criminal just like her. Obama Nation. She Hulk's BFF goes onto the website that is bashing her, Intelligentsia, and instantly gets an invite to an event by Hulk King, the admin of the site. The same website we were just told has tight security. How did she get an invite? Well, it's because she posted a video that they didn't have access to that she got from She Hulk's mom. So her mom came in with something at the perfect time, right when an event was about to happen. Happen. I think there's no show on Earth with more convenient things happening for the plot to move forward, and we're still not done. Hulk can calls her bro, and she's not a man, even though I've seen lots of guys call women bro, but whatever. So you know how there's a man who also works with She-Hulk? I forgive you if you forgot. Who hasn't done, like, anything this full season? Well, here's why he exists. It's so he can infiltrate the She-Hulk haters group in person. Okay, so there's a list of problems with this. Women, and by women, I mean the Hollywood ones. Um, you know sites like 4chan and Kiwi Farms have girls on their site, right? The ones you like to call pick-me girls. It wouldn't be a shock for any edgy group to see a woman there. Sure, it's mostly guys, but there would still be women. And second, this guy is only in the plot so he can do this. But here's the thing, even though he's a man, he's one of the good ones and is also stupid. So She-Hulk's BFF has to give him instructions over an earpiece. He asks if he will look sus if he's the only one with an earpiece. And she tells him no, because he won't be the only one, but he is the only one. Why can't this show follow its own rules it makes for itself? He's a little bitch and he doesn't want to go in. So even the good men suck in this show. Only the superhero guy is cool and he still has to do the walk of shame. But there's also She-Hulk's dad. Love that guy. She gives him a pep talk and tells him to refer to women as females. This is the latest thing they are offended by. So what can we call women at this point? I've seen times when they hated being called woman, girls, chicks, and now female. By the way, a gay anime dragon boy made a video on me and he said that me using the term females makes me look like an incel. He goes inside, and this man says one of the most sexist things I've heard in my life. He says he doesn't hate She-Hulk because she's a woman, and would hate her just as much if she was a man. 
What the hell? Doesn't this man know that men and women should never be held to the same standard? Women should be able to do whatever they want and never get called out for it. Okay, I know the point of this guy, and the others are supposed to say talking points that the people who don't like the show use. And they also use the same talking point about a lot of other shows and movies coming out nowadays. But, um, this show doesn't make an argument against them. I've been seeing this more and more. People will just say, OMG, this person made this talking point. Um, okay, are you going to make an argument against it? The guy who infiltrates this group almost breaks down after hearing him say this and almost leaves. Also, it turns out Todd, the guy who had a thing for She-Hulk, is revealed to be Hulk King the Big Bad. I did get a laugh out of this, but only because it was so stupid. So that's another negative laugh for this show. He asked if She-Hulk is strong as the Hulk or smarter than the Hulk. And should they have to act like she earned her powers? The other guys say no to everything he says, and they are all correct, by the way. He also says that superpowers should go to the best person for the job. Are we sure he's the villain? Because I agree with that. Oh, I get it. This is a talking point men make about women not being qualified for the job they have, right? Okay, cool. Please make an argument against it. She-Hulk tells the guy to say She-Hulk got everything through nepotism, which in a way she did. She only got her job because she had superpowers. We cut back to She-Hulk who wants to speak with Abomination, and the guy who tried to take her blood tells her that he's speaking at a meeting down by the docks. So out of everything that has happened in this show that is convenient for the plot to, you know, move forward, this is the biggest one of them all. Abomination is speaking at the same place all of the people who hate her are at. So they are all on the property of a guy she has defended in court, which is stupid, and she goes to look for him on the same night this is happening. And she went to go live with him, which they should know because they track her every move. Forge and track down a flag just by looking at the sky. Kiwi Farms tracked down a woman who went to a different country in two days. How did they not know she was going to be here? This is the worst show ever. Now, I think Abomination is supposed to be a representation of Jordan Peterson, or at least I think he is, but I don't care for the guy because I don't have daddy issues. I think I just pissed off a lot of people who are watching this video, but that being said, I don't know for sure. But if he is, then wow, Red Skull just wasn't enough. Also, if you are trying to make fun of Jordan Peterson by comparing him to a guy who everyone loves, as you've shown in episode two, or maybe it was three, then wow, epic fail. She-Hulk is absolutely shocked that Abomination has been transforming into his monster form, even though she's no longer his lawyer anymore. And other than violating his parole, he's not really doing anything wrong. And there was no need for him to even do this in the first place. So do you want to know the reason as to why he is transforming in the first place? Well, it's so he can take accountability for his actions at the end and spend 10 years in prison. By the way, she's his lawyer again when it happens. So, wow, that's a great lawyer. A guy barely violates his parole and he gets 10 years in fucking prison, which is basically the rest of his life with how old he is. Also, he said he did this more than once, so how has he not been reported? Why would he risk something for nothing? This is the worst written show I've ever seen in my life. We haven't even gotten to the worst part yet. Oh, and before you say he does it for money because he says he does it for profit, he's already rich! Jen's BFF runs in and yells out, we need to get out of here. This is an intelligentsia meeting. Wow, dumbass. Awesome job giving away your position. So Hulk King reveals that he has Jen's blood, which has been built up from episode one and was shown to be taken by one of the guys she slept with halfway through the season. But Jen breaks the fourth wall and says, 
Oh, this can't be where the show was going. Um, excuse me, are you high? It has been built up since the first episode. He transforms into Incel Hulk, which to be honest, I was hoping he would turn into Madman, but he instead transforms into, I think no one from the comics. Correct me if I'm wrong, my comment section is down below. Then Titania comes into the room and Hulk smashes down from the sky. A fight breaks out. Jen breaks the fourth wall, telling us none of these storylines make any sense. Wow, I've been saying that from the start. But the thing with her blood was built up from the start. Now we get to the part where She-Hulk finally actually jumps the shark. As bad as an ending like this could have been, she makes an even worse one than the one that was made to be on purposely bad. So I want to make this clear. Before this episode came out, the script was leaked. I did look at it, but I thought it just had to be fake. It was just too stupid to be real. We cut to the Disney Plus screen, which did catch me off guard for a second. She breaks through her own show and goes into Studios Assemble so she can talk to the writers. Now, I know the writers think this is super meta and funny. Sure, she hope breaks the fourth wall, but never to this level. Sure, she has talked with their own writers before and even come into their office, but not like this. This isn't She-Hulk levels of fourth wall breaking or even Deadpool levels. This is more like Gwenpool. Sure, they have all talked to their own writers before, but that's not my problem. It's what she does next. One of the writers says, what if we make season two all a dream? I know this is supposed to be a joke, but it would be better than this shit. I really wish this season would end with it all being a dream. She-Hulk insults the writers, saying that the blood plot was stolen from every other superhero movie ever, when it's not. Like, as a fact, it's not. Also, it was at least built up! Someone didn't get it because of convenience like every other plot in this show. So She-Hulk, just like a Karen, asked to speak to the manager. Way to go, writers. Keep fighting those female, I mean woman, stereotypes. Before she sees the manager, she has to sign this super long disclosure agreement. Wow, what a relatable joke. She takes out a few security guards on her way, one of which is a woman who of course does the best job against her. She meets Kevin, the a AI running Marvel. And he says, were you expecting a man? And no, I wasn't because I've seen the show. If it was a man, he would have just been there to be used as a joke, to be shit on, of course. But it still somehow shits on men because this was made to make fun of Kevin Feige. You know, the guy who made Marvel work. Are they doing this because he was considering leaving Marvel? Trust me, I looked into this and apparently one of the writers likes to bully him. And guess what? Apparently this scene of She-Hulk talking to Kevin was supposed to go on for 10 minutes, but they had to cut it down. But this review was long enough, so I'm just not going to get into it anymore. The joke is that a soulless machine runs Marvel. As a robot, I kind of find that to be a bit offensive. I do have a soul because I do have a human brain, but not the human anything else. To me, it does feel like a soulless machine made this stupid, stupid show. The AI says he makes near-perfect products. I guess he didn't write Phase 4 because it sucks. But I already did a video on that, so if you want more information, go check that out. She-Hulk gives him the same confused look and says what I said. Near-perfect? She tells the AI if we could agree that the show is a legal comedy. Which it isn't, because A, it's not funny, and B, it has almost nothing to do with law. She-Hulk talks about how every Marvel movie ends the same way, and they all tie into one another, which is false because Phase 4 only has the multiverse being built up in some of them, and that's the only thing tying them together. She makes a point in the one phase where this argument doesn't work, but she doesn't want her story to tie into anything else, which I gotta be honest, I completely agree with. And she also doesn't want her story to end with an epic fight scene. You know, Disney, if you are going to do something new, 
at least do something, you know, good. It's new to make a tank out of graham crackers, but that doesn't mean it's a good idea. So She-Hulk changes the canon of the ending, making her more powerful than anyone in all of Marvel because she can just edit the script herself. Todd doesn't get Hulk powers, Hulk doesn't show up, and a bunch of other things are changed. So how does the ending scene work with so much being changed? I don't know. We skip to everyone She-Hulk doesn't like getting arrested. I can't take this anymore. Let's just skip to the end. She has a small outside party with her family and Daredevil. Then Hulk shows up with his son Scar, who looks nothing like how he does in the comics. And now I know for sure that I'll never get a live action Planet Hulk movie. She-Hulk just had to ruin another thing I love. Sure, there's like an after credits scene, but... I'm done. I said all I wanted to. She-Hulk might just be the worst show I have ever seen in my life all the way through. The writers suck. It doesn't follow its own rules it made for itself. And the most convenient things for the plot to happen are in every episode. The effects suck. The fight with Daredevil looked even worse than the ending fight in Black Panther. And that's saying a lot. Sure, it's a TV show and not a movie, but that movie came out years ago. The characters suck. The villains suck. Everything about this show sucks, except for the ending. Because the ending might just be the worst ending in any show, movie, comic book, video game, or anything ever. I watched this show and reviewed it in full, so you can skip it. I took the suffering for you. Like Jesus on the cross, I suffered for your sins. There's other things I could say about this show or what went on behind the scenes with the writers, but this review is long enough. But I will say, this was even worse than the Twilight movies. I thought that was going to be the worst thing I ever had to sit through. But this takes its place. And then some. Because at least Twilight didn't ruin things I and many others like. Sad thing is, I just have this feeling that things are only going to get worse from here. I need a break, so next review I do will be about something I actually like. Modern day movies and shows based off video games. If you guys want me to do a full review of something like, I don't know, the new Lord of the Rings TV show on Amazon, get this video to a million views and I'll consider it. Hey, you. This is a multi-year journey you're about to embark on, on coming to terms with being the Hulk. I would like to thank all my Patreons. They really helped me pay the bills. I can't believe this review actually came out to being longer than my full review of all the Twilight movies. Like a season of a TV show is longer than a movie, but not five movies. I'm also starting a new playlist called my full series review playlist. Of course, it will be updated very slowly because I only have two videos for it, this and the Twilight video. And doing a full review of anything at bare minimum takes me like a month. I just hope this She-Hulk video does a lot better than my full review of Twilight. During the creation of this video, a lot of things went wrong behind the scenes. A lot of my editors had their own personal problems. And I don't think I've had more editors work on a single video than this one. I just wanted to make this video because I haven't seen anyone do a full review of the entire show of She-Hulk all in one video. Let's just hope they don't make a season two because if they do, this statement will be very out of date. But the good news is because this video took so long to make, I got a jump start on the next two videos that will be coming out after this one. And I expect them to both come out this month. Anyways, if you sat through this entire video, you have my thanks. See you next time.